Let's see what Frischlid has to say. Ja, möglichst gut fahren, mal mitfahren vorne, mal schauen wie es läuft. Well, he's going to do his best uh, to try and lead. This is the last weekend before we uh, we get to uh, to Berlin. And uh, well, he, he doesn't want many more points, but uh, if he finishes in fourth or fifth place, uh, that should be okay. Yeah, <laughs> klar wäre es gut, wenn man uh, ein bisschen mehr. Well, he's just been asked, and it's a pity he's so far in the lead. It's not my fault, he said, that uh, I've got all these points from the success so far. What about Klug? Das ist richtig, ja. Im Grunde kann ich eigentlich noch alles ja umsetzen, um den um die Sache vielleicht noch gewinnen zu können. Es wird eigentlich sehr schwierig. Yeah, everything's possible between himself and Frischnet. He could win here. Und wir uns die Punkte müssen, damit ich packe Start, ich den Weltcup noch gewinnen könnte. Ähm, ich muss einfach abwarten, wie das Rennen heute läuft. Ähm, Berlin ist natürlich für mich ein ähm, Heimvorteil. Von daher irgendwo schon ein kleiner, kleiner Vorteil für yes, mich. Ja, und wenn es und Probleme gibt, zum Beispiel Hirk, hat er einen die dann eine Rolle spielen, Defekte, Glück, Tagesform etc. Er sagt, er hat auch ein bisschen einen Heimvorteil hier und er fühlt sich gut. Aber du weißt nicht, mit mechanischen Problemen kann es die besten Rollen sein. Was über diesen Fall, der immer mit Punkten hat? Ich denke, ich bin glücklich, dass ich ein Zweiter bin. That. Well, we hope he holds out too. We've seen him with more than enough troubles in the past, and we've just been looking at uh, Tinker Cures as they start out of the blocks. Then Cures, who uh, has had a first and a second place, he won in uh, Mount Sinan. He won in. He was second in uh, Bramont, then lying in second place overall in the Grundig World Cup at the moment. And that very important start. And by the way, as we watch here on the right-hand side, Barry Clark coming through. I have to tell you that uh, David Baker, the uh, British champion from last year and this year, in fact, had to qualify because uh, he was not in the top 50 in the world rankings. He'd not ridden a Grundig World Cup before this race. And he had been put, having finished fifth in the qualifying round, way back on the grid. And going into the first water splash today, he really was off the pace, lying about 60th from the front of the riders and this was going to make it very very difficult for the the British champion to make his way through amazingly the dust storm set up here as Mike Klug then battling his way through at the moment Johnny Tomac going through Klug in the yellow Gary Ford making a good move to get in there as well look at this it looks like something from the desert, doesn't it? California, here we come. This is Plymouth. This is British sunshine at its best down the southwest of England. And an enormous crowd roaring on the world's best in mountain biking. Gally Ford amazed everybody though. He's in the lead then. Just ahead of Klug. To Tomac just behind him. A group of riders coming through at the moment. Ned over in there. Bally Clark. Tinker Jurez going through. Herrick coming through. Rutherford. There's Clark. Well, this is a tremendous group of riders up in front. Going through at the moment then, uh, number 11, that's uh, Mike Close of the USA. Hank Denise, the world champion, coming through. Nicky Cray for Great Britain on his way through. There, number one, Thomas Frechnet. Happy, I think, just to pick up a few points, not pushing too much. He's been actually out of action doing his army service uh, in, uh, in Switzerland, like they have to do at the moment. So he's been a bit out of commission, a bit out of... Uh, the uh, sharpness of competition, but Gally Ford then dropping through. Frischner, who came into this championship, having won the race in Barcelona, second in uh, Bassa del Grappa, he won in Mont Snow, second in uh, Mont Saint Anne, he won, uh, and then he was, so what, third in Bromont. So he came into this race, Frischner, as the moral leader, but this man here, Klug, had to do something about it. Klug in the yellow. Tomek not far behind him. But Gary Ford setting a phenomenal uh, burst of speed at the front. Look at this. A tricky part of the course, but the man still leading. Gary Ford from Great Britain. Second in the British Championship had uh, Tomac, ex world champion, ex Grundig World Cup uh, winner on his wheel. And that opened up quite a useful gap for Kluger coming through. What a disappointing time he'd had this season. Remember when he cut his finger badly in, uh, in Belgium and that bad crash that he'd had. And what a character too, because Kluger had won a couple of rounds in Belgium and in uh, Italy. There, Clark number 19 for Rally going on his way through. Jadim like number 10 coming through. This great blue rider, and look who's beginning to power his way through now. Having all sorts of problems to get to front. Yes, it's David De Baker for Rally. There shortly behind him, Rooney Heidel, number 27 going through. Well, 
This very technical course suiting the rider for Scott. What a revelation he's been to mountain bike racing this year. Gary Ford always in the top half dozen in the scores so far. Not quite got a first, second or third, but he's been there or thereabouts. And this is the man trying to pull him back. The battling Tomac. Not only had Tomac this year in the mountain biking set about trying to win the World Cup, he'd also done a downhill and won one of those as well. Tomac a great all-rounder, tremendous character. And Klug was off his bike and pushing. Ex-World Cyclocross champion had to run up that one. And look at this traffic jam behind. Klug, 10. Number one, that's Frischnet. Cheers for Barry Clark, the rally rider still in contention at the moment. The world champion just behind him, on the way up. Nicky Craig still staying up there behind them. Number 21, Tim Rutherford. Now the saddle, look here, going up, it's David Baker. Just quickly jumps off. He's in amongst all the traffic at the moment. Finding it difficult to force his way through the field. And down the other side they roar. The shimmering heat of the descent. Cracking day for mountain bike racing. Well, let's take a view from our unusual camera on Mike Klug's bike of that descent. Locking the brakes. Keeping the bike as straight as he can do. Round the bends, he's got to throw it round and make sure he doesn't lock the back wheel and come off. And accelerating away into bum holes. Still Gary Ford just ahead of John Tomac. What a close race this was. The spectator being treated to an enormous battle. True mountain bike racing at its best. Dry condition, dead over and then in third spot. <laughs> Barry Clark still in there in fourth. The Britons in first and fourth, really showing some of these great stars from abroad what it was all about. Peter Hurt going through, lives in Luxembourg then, won the Grunding Challenge Cup way back in 1991, but Klug was in all sorts of trouble, his saddle pin had cracked, and Klug then out of the race. The battle going full tilt for success at Plymouth in this, the ninth round of the Grunding World Cup. Top five to count, plus the fact that the riders must take part in the final in Berlin, which we're going to bring to you on Eurosport. We're also going to bring you some of the best action from the World Championship, Medebief as well. Well, nice little battle going on between Ford, Mickey Craig doing a great ride as well. That's not fine. But problems as far as the riders are concerned, because now getting towards the back end as Denise begins to move his way through. He really hasn't done very much in the World Cup this year. He's still struggling to stay inside the top ten places. And he's chasing down the riders just up in front of him. Can he stay with them at the moment? Denise, I think perhaps just waiting for that World Championship to preserve that jersey. He's not been there or thereabouts through the World Cup so far. And the crowd then went actually on the final lap. Ned Overend coming through, but look who's got up to him. David Baker has made it. And as he got up to him, so they blew Tomac straight out of the back. That was a great disappointment then for Tomac, who'd set a hot pace in front with Gary Ford. Gary Ford was also in trouble. Chain off, jammed and pulling hard to try and free it. So Gary Ford then trying to fight his way back within all sorts of trouble. A great disappointment for the British rider who'd set such a hot pace early on. In the final lap then of this circuit, 12 kilometres to be covered of this very testing circuit, and on his way through then, Jan Wojciech from Poland. Wojciech fighting to keep fourth place. Bart Brenton from the Netherlands, ridden four out of eight rounds, best for six so far in Belgium. Then Don Mara, fourth in world champion in 1991. Well, he likes chocolate ice cream, I think he could do with some now, because it's very dusty, very hot, very hard. They're on the final lap of this circuit. Well, the Lord Mayor is there, together with Mike Cobble, who owns uh, Newnham Park, where this race is taking place. But this is the disaster that rather than have you have to look after your bikes when you have a problem out on the course. And getting back on his bike, but now losing a certain amount of ground there. A great disappointment then. But even more troubles then, as far as... Uh, Gary Ford was concerned, not only had his chain come off and jammed, but he actually broke the chain coming on this last lap, so Baker seizing an advantage.
pushing on hard towards the finish. Ned Overend was in all sorts of trouble. Ned had slipped and so Baker began to go away. No, Overend just couldn't close the gap down. This great battling rider then. Mr. Mountain Bike himself. He was unofficial world champion way back in uh, 1988 and 89. Six times national champion and now found himself against the double British champion, Baker. But behind them then, Tomac was beginning to recover. He'd gone through an awful bad patch and he wanted to get back net over end. Frischnet also could see that he could close down on uh, Tomac and get some useful points. Behind then, Peter Helleck. We had a couple of second places, one third. This man third in the European Championship this year. And behind, Gerhard Zabriak. Well, he said when he comes to Britain, he always gets a wet arse, he puts it, by getting the rain down. And this time he had three crossings of rivers to do. And yes, he got wet yet again. That's Don Marner. He's had a second place and one fourth so far. Very good cyclocross rider indeed, but right now it's David Baker's day. What a character, what a man. Not only is he a good mountain bike rider, he's national cyclocross champion of Great Britain. Also, Elasha, he was national uh, second in the National Criterium Championship, so Ned over in knew he got a tough competitor to try and pull him back. But Ned is a very, very strong man indeed. Well, the encouragement then to Jan Weigert to try and close it up because he's got uh, Vijak and Tomac locked in combat here. Tomac had recovered for the awful pacing he'd had in the past. Frischnet then quite happily on his way through. Just happy to stay in the points. His main contender for the crown of Grundig World Champion this year. Klug was out of the race. Roger Honigo just going through for Richie. Looking for a useful fifth place. Spectators waiting for the riders to come into sight at the end of this very, very testing course. And the announcer then, Greg Oxenham, saying, yeah, here he comes. It's David Baker thundering into the finishing straight. David Baker on his uh, rally Dynatech bike. That bike made a special BP metal matrix tubes. Extremely light. A unique way of making bicycles. Rally have got now is the specialised product division at Nottingham under my good friend Gerald Donovan. Having made, yet again, another race-winning bike. Dave Baker, the victor. What a character, what a man. And he's concentrated on British racing so far this season. He still intends to do that. He's not riding the final in Berlin because it will conflict with one of the rounds in the Northern Series. As Ned Overland then coming into second place. Well, they call him Shred. He got a bit shredded today on this course. Two hours and 31 minutes and eight seconds. David Baker crossing the line in first place. Ned Overend in second spot. Look who comes in the third. Another rally rider. This one, though, sponsored by Rally America. Taking third place, John Tomac. Ex world champion, ex Grundig world champion, world cup winner as well. Road rider with the 7 Eleven team. Yeah, it was quite hard, really. But what about David? I had to ride the qualifying race yesterday. It was like doing a stage race with all the top riders coming in on the second day. So it was pretty hard for me, really. Welcome, each friend. Well then, David Baker expressing his sentiments over the difficulties of the course, having had to qualify. John Tomac with his uh, stubble, his new disguise. Looking back down the finishing straight right now, coming towards us is... Well, the rest of the riders coming in now, that's Roger Honiger, then this is the man Frischneck in the lead in the Grundig World Cup, just being followed in by Peter Hadek, another man who has got a great cyclocross background behind it. So we're matching cyclocross mountain bikers uh, together with the, uh, the road specialists as well, but it's a very, very hard course they've ridden on at Plymouth. The final will come up in Berlin, and this is the current position then on the charts. Just showing you first of all the results of the day. A great ride by David Baker, not in contention for the Grundig World Cup because he's not going to ride in Berlin. That's his first one he's ridden in and quite uniquely, not only that was his first one, he actually won it as well. The Frischneck riding in to that sixth place, keeps the lead going into finals in Berlin. So that was it from Plymouth and the Grundig World Cup.